I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. All my help cometh from the Lord. This is the day to give God glory. Another day to give him praise. And another day to tell him that we're thankful. Can we just bless the Lord? Can we bless the Lord? And can we stand for a word of prayer? Father, we come to you today thanking you for another opportunity to give your name the praise and to give your name the glory. And most of all, Father, we want to tell you thank you for waking us up to see another day that we've never seen before. And Father, as we go throughout this day, we ask that you continue to bless us, heal us, keep us, and hold us in your loving arms. And Father, we came today to give your name the praise and to give your name the glory. Someone today, God, made a press through that door. And Father, we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, God. God, as we go throughout this service, God, we ask that your anointing continue to reign, hold us down, and God, pray, give us a prayer in our mouth and father we thank you God and father we're going to open up our ears to hear the words for ourselves and not our neighbors God because when the word comes God we're going to search ourselves God we're going to search our hearts God we're going to search our minds God we're going to search our souls God and we give your name the glory God God we thank you we thank you and we give your name the praise in Jesus name we pray amen Song says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and we bless it. Come on. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made, and we bless him, and we give him glory. Oh, I see you, sister. I see you, sister, darling. <laughs> Listen, we want to encourage you. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the on, Lord has me. made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on, sing it. Oh. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We lift you high in this place. Yeah, yeah.
to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. Thanksgiving. We certainly say happy Thanksgiving to all of you, those that are in the sanctuary, those that are on the stream. Amen. It's good to be in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. You left the kitchen, amen, to worship the king. Amen. You left cooking, amen, to come see about Christ. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. We're not going to hold you too long, but we want to draw your attention to Luke 17, uh, verses 11 through 19, a very familiar passage of Scripture. And we, want, we don't want you to allow this familiarity to bore you today, but as always, a, a good uh, new revelation, amen, and old Scripture, amen. Luke 17, Dr. Luke 17. We're going to start at the 11th verse. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. As he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, somebody shouted, one of them. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a capital S Samaritan. 
And Jesus answering said, Where were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Last verse, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith have made the whole. Amen. Verses 11 through 19. We certainly thank God. Amen for his scripture. Amen. May he bless the hearers, doers, readers of his scripture. You may rest yourselves in the very presence of the almighty God. We salute our deacons, ministers, officers, and friends. We certainly thank God for all of you. Amen. That sacrifice to come to the house of prayer on this day. Always good to see Mother Nelson in our midst. Always good to see Minister Alice Brown, and it's so good to see Aunt Marie Deacon Blocker. Sister is here all the way from Dublin. Amen. His sister, my auntie. Amen. And we certainly thank God for you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Brothers and sisters, we're going to tag this Greater Gratitude Part 3. Greater Gratitude Part 3. I share with you couple of weeks ago that our gratitude is tied to our deliverance. Our gratitude is tied to our deliverance. You can't really be delivered unless you have a grateful heart. Miserable people hate to be around merry people. I'm going to say that again. Miserable people, y'all get on their nerves when you're grateful and you're merry and you're happy. You get on the nerves of miserable people. Today, you're going to, amen, be around some miserable people, amen, because some of us are in families that, amen, have miserable people. Check their language. Check what they talk about. It's always unfruitful and unproductive. Y'all ain't helping me. And as soon as you try to shift the narrative, as soon as you try to shift, amen, the conversation to something positive, they turn on you. I wish I had some real folk in the house today. And so gratitude is not only connected to your deliverance, but gratitude is also connected to your peace. Preach, black man. Amen. It takes gratitude to get delivered, and it takes gratitude to keep some peace. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm so glad. I'm thankful not just on today, but I'm thankful every day. Amen. Because it brings me a sense of peace and deliverance at the same time. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We learned this Sunday, David said, I will. David decided. David made a choice to bless the Lord. I, do I have any takers this morning? Amen. You, you have to be intentional about blessing the Lord. You have to be intentional about being grateful and thankful. You have to be intentional. You have to make a choice and decide, I will bless the Lord. But then he said, at all times, amen, not only, amen, did he make a choice, but he was committed. Somebody say commitment. Yeah, he, 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 he made a choice. He, he decided, but he had a discipline to stay committed to doing it. I will bless the Lord, not when I got money, no. I will bless the Lord when I don't have money. I will bless the Lord on top of the mountain. I will bless the Lord in the valley. My circumstances has nothing to do with me blessing the Lord because I'm disciplined enough to bless him at all times. Bless him when I'm talked about. Bless him when I'm patted on the back. Y'all ain't helping me. Bless him when I'm up. Bless him when I'm down. I have a discipline. I have a commitment to bless the Lord. Not only did David choose it, not only did David commit to it, but he was consistent in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually, y'all ain't helping me, be in my mouth. He was determined that every time he opened his mouth, something positive was, y'all ain't helping me. Too many of us, we speak 
damnation into our own life. We speak defeat into our own life. That's why I like the text that we're about to segue to because this text of these ten lepers and this one coming back, it teaches us that gratitude, amen, amen, helps us get delivered, but also help us keep a peace of mind. Here in the text, my brother and sister, lest I hold you too long, brothers and sisters, here we have ten lepers. Ten. Jesus is going through a certain village, and he sees ten. I'm going to give it to you. I'm, I'm going to give it to you, and then we'll, you'll follow along. Amen. In this text, we're going to see get up, get out, and get back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me let me let me have it. See, when you get up, that's your fortitude. When you get out, that's your attitude. When you go back and say thank you, that's your gratitude. Y'all, y'all mighty quiet. Amen. Amen. He sees, he sees ten lepers, and the ten lepers sees him, and they cry out for mercy. Watch this. Y'all miss it already. Amen. I don't care what condition you are in. I don't care what you're facing. Amen. The first thing you need to do in the midst of what you're going through is get up. Touch somebody and say, get up, get up. Amen. What, 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 what would have happened if these ten lepers was home under the comfort of the press and down? They was out and about. Y'all ain't hipping me. Find somebody and say, I don't know what you're going through, but the best thing you can do for yourself this morning is get up. That's why the church ain't full this morning, because some of y'all didn't get up. If he woke you up, you ought to get up. Can I teach it? They have leprosy. They were they were outcasts. They they were no longer allowed into society, but they got up. And sometimes because we don't get up, amen, we mess up our blessing. Y'all lay up in me. You got to be in place to receive what God has for you. You got to be in the spot where God will provide. Abraham went to the place where God will provide. I dare to touch you. People say, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> they got up. Even with leprosy, I know we live in a world that we're already behind the gun. We're already short, amen. But that does not, amen, exempt you from getting up. Getting up is better than giving up. Preach Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, I'd rather get up than give up. <laughs> Getting up, amen, is indicative of your fortitude. The people that don't get up, they, they lack fortitude. Amen. When you have fortitude, amen, you had a bad day yesterday, but guess what? You still going to get up today because there's new possibilities. I feel like preaching. Every time you get up, you're giving God an opportunity to shift your narrative. Every time you get up, you're giving God the opportunity, amen, to flip your script. Preach Holy Ghost. The reason he saw the 10 is because they got up. No matter what condition they found themselves in, they got up. Outcast, banned from society. But they still got up. And because they got up, he saw them from afar off. That, that's verse 13. Y all, y all, y all, y all, y all, I'm a Bible preacher. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yeah, yeah. Somebody say get up. That's 42. But look what happens in verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. Y'all see it? Get up, fortitude. Get out, that's attitude. You can't get out until you get up. Some of y'all want to shut yourselves in and isolate yourselves from people. No, isolation leads to devastation. 
Jesus say, now that you guys are up, I see what you have. I don't need to lay hands on you. I don't need to, amen, speak in tongues over you. All I need you to do, watch this, watch this, getting out entails being, amen, obedient. Mm. Sometimes it's our disobedient that keeps us diseased. And if you look at that word disease, it keeps you diseased. You can't have no ease because you're disobedient. Amen. Some of you would have, or some of us, let me put me in it. Hey, some of us would have fussed with Jesus. Wait a minute, Jesus. You told me to go show myself to the priest. Because some of y'all know it all. I got a lot of bunch of know it all. Yeah, amen. You, you do know that I can't show myself to the priest. Amen. Unless I'm healed. Y'all missed it. See, some of y'all religion stops y'all from getting redemption. You so rude. All you care about is rules and regulation that you miss redemption. How many know Jesus supersede any rule wait a minute Jesus you're wrong again I can't show myself to the priest because the purpose of me showing myself to the priest is when I get to the priest I have to be healed and for them that y'all ain't helping me release me back into society but notice in the text all ten just got up and y'all ain't helping me got the going when you get up you got to get out even though you may have the same condition that when you got up and you're getting out, take that condition with you. Some of us brought our condition to church today. We got out of that house, came to church with the condition, but guess what? Because you got up and got out, God is going to blow your mind. But that takes attitude. I told you, getting up takes fortitude. Getting out takes the right attitude because your outlook determines your outcome. Let me say that again. I'm with the Pussyana too. Your outlook determines your outcome. Your outlook determines your outcome. And, and the reason why many of y'all like rules and regulations because you don't want to do it anyway. So you so you you hold on to rules and regulations and religious rituals not to obey the voice of God. Some of you subscribe to how you were raised over what the Bible says do. Y'all done said to me, but I wasn't raised like that. that that's the problem. My mom and dad didn't play that, but that's the problem. Y'all got quiet on that one. Hmm? Sometimes, because your mama and daddy didn't play it, sometimes you got to play mercy. Maybe that's why you turned out the way you turned out, because they didn't give you no mercy. And you trying to, watch this, the Bible say, envy not the oppressor and choose none of their ways. Boy, y'all mighty quiet on Thanksgiving. You're taking a playbook from everybody else instead of taking the play from the book. Boy, they got quiet on me. The playbook ain't mom and daddy playbook. The playbook is the book of God. And so we can't get these rules and regulations to be disobedient. They all went. Yeah. Get up, fortitude. Get out. What's your attitude? Because if you got the wrong attitude, you're not getting out. Y'all missing what getting out really means. I'm not talking about just getting out the house. I'm talking about getting out that situation. Getting out that mentality. Getting out bad philosophy. Hmm? You stuck on rules, but you ain't 
you ain't paying attention to the redeemed. Here it is. Get up. Fortitude. I don't care what I'm going through. I'm getting up. <laughs> well, I wish I had some papers. I don't care how broke I am. I'm getting up. I don't care how depressed I am. I'm getting up. Today, November 23rd, that's the day my grandma was born who's going to be with the Lord. But I still got up, dressed up, came to the temple. I'm going to bless his holy name. And I miss Mother Amanda Ripple. Amen. The day is his birth. The day is her birthday. But guess what? The day is also the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad therein. Look at somebody say, be glad on purpose. Don't let nothing, amen, separate you from the love of God. Get up, fortitude. Get out, attitude. Watch this now. Look at that. Look at that. 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, boy, I wish it was Sunday. I'll stay 15 more minutes longer. But it's Thursday. It's thanks for Thursday. Some of y'all trying to get back. It's already cooked. I'll get two more minutes then if it's already cooked. As they obeyed, as they went, they were cleansed. Ooh, y'all missed it. The more you get out, the more he'll clean you out. As they went, they were, every step they took, their miracle was manifested. Every step you take in obedience, the miracle in your own personal life will be manifested. I don't care how mad people make you, don't you fall for that mess. I don't care how much they talk about, don't you fall for their mess. You keep walking in the direction that Jesus told you to go, and you'll see he'll even make your enemies. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Your footstool, but you got to do what Jesus say do, no matter what. As they went, they were clean. Then it get to my good part. This is the good part. And one of them Notice that he was healed. Bill Collectors call you on holidays too. And one of them notice he was healed. Turn back with a loud voice. Glory find God fell on his face, gave him thanks, and y'all ain't gonna like this, and he was a capital S Samaritan. Okay, here's where it gets a little offensive. Most religious people are ungrateful people. We're so busy being religious. Watch this. The other nine was Jews. Jews. He was a capital S. Look at the text. Don't take my word for it. The Bible didn't put Samaritan. It put a S Samaritan. And this capital S Samaritan had more scruples than the religious group. Watch this. Jews are in covenant with God. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the Bible says, not me, that they are God's chosen. Oh, somebody getting the table. And it's the chosen ones that kept on trucking. <laughs> Can I go back to go forward? It's amazing Jews had no dealing with Samaritans, uh, but once you got the same condition, now you go all hang out together. 
let me, let me teach you something. Jews has no dealings with Samaritans. They did not like Samaritans, didn't hang out with Samaritans, did not keep company with Samaritans. But when all of them had leprosy, now we can all hang together because birds of a feather flock together. But the religious group kept on going. Okay, okay, y'all looking at me. Here it is. Get up, fortitude. Get out, attitude. Get back, gratitude. Don't you ever stop going back and telling God thank you. I heard a preacher say it like this, how high that God, how high does God have to lift you before you leave him? Sometimes God can elevate us so high we forget about the same God that did the elevating. So don't get up and get out and don't get back. Every day, amen, every day you ought to go back and tell God thank you. Even if you so-called call it a bad day. Because guess what? Some folk can't even have a bad day because they're not here. Y'all ain't helping me. It's a blessing just to even have a bad day. Woo, I wish I had some folk. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this. Amen. All your bad days, I got a line of folk that'll switch with you. Amen. You think it's a bad day, but they'll switch with you and take your bad day. The problem is uh, you never go back and tell God thank you. He, he's so old. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm not trying to be deep, but when he turned around, he was not being disobedient to going, I want you to catch this, to show them himself to the priest. They went to their secular priest. He went to the high. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Some of you showing yourself to the wrong priest. I feel the anointing in this place today. Look at your and say, make sure you go to the right priest. Make sure you go to the right priest. Because there's some priest that can put you back into population. But there's another priest that can give you power. There's some priest that can put you, y'all ain't helping me, make you feel good about your situation. But there's a priest that can heal you from your situation. There's some priest that can make you feel good, but the high priest make you live good. Who am I talking to? He turned back to say thank you. He was, he was grateful on the way. Oh, y'all missed it. Boy, I'm trying to get y'all out of here. See, some of you want to wait till the miracle happen to be grateful. He was grateful on the onset. He, 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 he didn't have to go get the seal of approval from man. He didn't have to go get the certificate, y'all. It's in the book, amen, from man. Because when Jesus saw him and asked him where the nine was, and notice he had nothing to say about the other nine. When God do something for you, you got nothing to say about what somebody else didn't do. You too concerned about what he did for you. Jesus, I'm talking like I would have talked, amen. I don't care about that nine. I come back for me. This is how some of y'all want to handle it. Well, you know, Jesus, they not like me. I, I realized how good you were and how good you are. And I came back to say thank you. You know, they, them, them heathens. Yeah, you know, y'all church people call people heathens. 
Yeah, yeah. He doesn't you say. They don't have the kind of relationship you and I have. They, they, they're not as grateful as I am and spiritual. They, they don't come to Sunday school like me. They don't pay tithes like me. They, they don't support the church and the pastor like I do. Anytime you have to dim somebody else's light to make your light brighter. They said that he had nothing to say about the nine. Can, he, can I tell you what he did? Amen. When Jesus asked him about the nine, he praised them. Can I tell you what he did when Jesus asked about the nine? He glorified him. Can I tell you what he did when, the Jesus, when he, Jesus asked him about the nine? He gave him all the praise and worship. He fell on his feet and cried out, y'all ain't helping me. Stop talking about everybody else and focus on your relationship. Just me and Jesus. I don't know why they didn't come back, but I can only tell you why I came back. And I'm getting back to saying thank you. Thank you on Sunday. Thank you on Monday. Thank you on Tuesday. Thank you on Wednesday. Thank you on Thursday. Thank you on Friday. Thank you on Saturday. Thank you on Sunday. I don't got time to be worried about nobody else. They are not found that return to give God glory. Say, look, look what, boy, I wish, I don't want to turn it to a Bible study. Look what it says in verse 18. Save this stranger. He's a big capital Samaritan in 16. He's a stranger in 18. But the people that know God, they kept trucking. Well, y'all missing this. Don't you get so religious that you miss it. Don't you get so high on your holy horse that strangers know him more than you. Oh, there's some people under the tree can come in here and have church. I'll keep tooting your nose up at people. Hmm? Hmm? There's some people next door. Come in here and have church. Because they're making it rain over here. Y'all making it sprinkle over here. They giving they all over there. Y'all giving some over here. They doing this over there. Y'all bought up a $1 bill over here. Strangers. Samaritans can know him better than us. Oh, y'all got quiet now. Yeah, that's why you, when I talk to people, I don't beat them with the Bible, y'all. Oh, y'all quiet. I don't start throwing scripture at people and beating them over the head. And some of y'all throw the same scripture y'all ain't even listening to. Okay, I'm going to stay there since y'all got a little quiet on me. Some of y'all throwing scriptures on people you ain't even following. You're not even obeying. Let the life you live. People tired of hearing sermons. They want to see a sermon. This stranger gave us a thanksgiving sermon. He never mounted a pulpit. He never took a microphone, but he was the only one, the only one that turned around and told God, thank you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to be that one this morning. I know I've been through some ups and downs. I, I know I had a rough life, but I guess what? I just got just realized I, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm gracious. I, I got a gratitude. I, I'm going back to tell God, thank you. I may not have everything I want, but I got everything I need. I may not be what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. I'm grateful. He said, arise and go. 
Arise and go. Can you, can you tell somebody arise mean get up too? Then he said go. He said arise and go. Get up. Get out. Get back. Get up. Fortitude. Get out. Attitude. Get back. Gratitude. Tell your neighbor, say, get back to give God some thanks. No, find another neighbor. They still sad. Amen. Find another neighbor, say, get back to giving God some thanks. Tell them it'll make you feel better. It'll make you act better. It'll make you love better. It'll make you forgive better. It'll make you live better. It'll make you appreciate God better. I don't know who I'm talking to. But this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad day in. Shake your neighbor hand. Say, neighbor, I don't have leprosy, but I do have an issue. But I thank God that my issue didn't keep me down. I thank God that I took my issue to the issue solver. I thank God that when they solved my issue, I didn't keep going. I came back to tell God thank you. I got one question for you. Do I have any grateful people in the house this morning? Do I have anybody that want to tell God thank you? If you're not too mean, and you're not too stiff, and you're not too cute. Take 10 seconds and tell God thank you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now open your mouth. Put your head back. Put your hands up. And give God your best praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Say, neighbor, I hope you're not miserable because I'm married. And if you're miserable and I'm married, I'm about to get on your nerves because I just look back over my life. I just look back over my life and saw where he bought me from. He bought me from a mighty long way. If he bought you from a mighty long way, let the redeem of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, you ought to let everybody know I am redeemed, bought with a price, Jesus came and changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them, tell them, tell them I've been redeemed. Grab your neighbor by the hand, shake it like you're gonna shake it off. Say, neighbor, oh shucks. Say, neighbor, he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. Say, yeah, say, yeah. Put your arms around your neighbor Say neighbor I'm gonna leave you alone but just like I'm holding you, I want you to know 
God is holding you. He's holding you. He's keeping you. He's protecting you. He's shielding you. Don't you get weary and well doing because your ship. Hey, your ship, your ship is heading your way. Just be grateful, be thankful. Tell God thank you in the morning. Tell God thank you at noonday. Tell God thank you when you lay down. And I declare and I decree the Lord will tell you arise and go. Your faith have made you whole. Shake three people's hand and say, stop letting people steal your joy. Come on, shake people and say, stop letting people steal your joy. You got Jesus' joy. We're so grateful to have Harvest and Mount Nebo worship together. We're going to ask Pastor Tess to come lead us in prayer. Pastor Whipple, Montez Whipple Sr. will lead us in prayer. Streamers, amen. Everyone in sanctuary, please stand. If you desire to make your way to this altar for prayer on this morning, you can come. What a word from our pastor on this morning. But even in Thanksgiving, we still need prayer. And so if you desire your prayer, make your way to this altar. Thank God for such a powerful word that we ought to have enough sense to tell God thank you. And Pastor blessed me on today. Y'all come closer. Come closer. He said you got to get to a place. Stop worrying about other people. But focus your attention on what God is doing in your life. And so tell your name. I ain't worrying about you. I'm worrying about me. So that I get my soul right. And so on this morning, because it's Thanksgiving, we don't want to come asking God for anything, but we just want to pray a prayer of Thanksgiving. Before we do that, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, I'm thankful for you this morning. I'm thankful. Come on, do it with a smile. I'm thankful for you this morning. I'm thankful. Grab somebody by the hand. Eternal gracious God, we come to you. Thank you this morning for another day. We thank you for another Thursday. We thank you for another Thanksgiving. For your word declares, give thanks unto the Lord for this is the will of God concerning you and so god we thank you 
this morning. We don't come asking for anything, God, but we just come just to tell you thank you. Thank you for how you watched over us all night long. Uh, while angels protected us, while we slept in our beds on last night. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. God, we even thank you for keeping us in perfect peace. Some of us could have been crazy, God, but, but you allow us, God, to have a stable mind. We woke up this morning. We didn't put our shoes on our back and our clothes on our feet. But with the activity of our limbs, we was able to get ready this morning to come to the harvest just to tell you thank you. God, we may not have what we want, but we tell you thank you. We may not drive the car that we want, but we tell you thank you. We may not live in the big house, but God, we tell you thank you, God. And even if you decide not to bless us, we still tell you thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for being the creator of the universe, the redeemer of your people. That's the ultimate principle, subject of scripture, and the object of the church confession and worship and service. We tell you thank you this morning. Thank you for Mother Nelson being here this morning, God. Thank you for the mothers of the church, God. Thank you for the pastor of the church, God. Thank you for the deacons and the trustees, God, and the, 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 the choir, God, the musicians, God, the ushers, God. We just thank you for everybody on this morning. And God, some of us, God, may not have a big meal to eat today, but we bow our heads and still tell you thank you. Because, God, if you decide not to do anything for us, as Pastor said on today, even in our bad days, you still deserve thankfulness. And so, God, we thank you for another day. God, I even pray a special prayer for those who are grieving in this season, for those who are watching, God, with tears in their eyes. Allow them, God, to focus on good memories and not bad memories. Because, God, one day when it's all said and done, there will be a finally family reunion. God, you said, God, in your word, God, that when you come to dead and Christ go rise, and we are still here, we're going to be caught up in the air to meet our loved ones. And so, God, let us, God, enjoy this day. As my pastor and the word of God always say, for this is the day that you have made and God we will rejoice and be glad in it we come against the enemy right now devil we serve you notice you will not steal our happiness on today but we're going to be grateful for this is the will of God concerning us it is in Jesus name and the people of God who love the Lord say amen hug somebody tell them I'm thankful for you and there's nothing you can do about it thank you Lord You, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Montez Whipple you, Senior. Lord. We did it in one hour, hour power. Amen. 9 30, 10 30. Thank you so much for coming out. Listen. I also want to thank God for um, Amber, Amber Holloman. Minister Holloman's daughter is with us from out of town. Amen. I can't forget my niece. Amen. She's, amen, sharing Thanksgiving with the family in Miami this year. We thank God for Amber, my niece. Amen. Amen. Listen, amen. We're getting ready to leave. Amen. We done got up. Amen. We done got out. Now it's time to get back. Amen. Amen. And when you get back, thank God. Amen. Amen. Ways to give is coming up on your stream. Our deacons are coming. Amen. Cash App, Zelle, and Give to Find. There's three three ways you can do it. Amen. Cash App, Zelle, and Give to Find. We also have QR, QR codes for your liking. Amen. And again, we thank you for worshiping with us. And always good to see First Lady Ashley Whipple. Amen. In our midst. Amen. My daughter in the ministry. Amen. Good to have the Mount Nebo family worshiping with us. And we're going to do it again on Christmas. 
Amen. This this year, actually, you can put it back on me. This year, um, we're going to do the Christmas service. Since Christmas Eve is on Sunday, we just do it that day. Amen. We won't have to bring you back out Monday. So Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday. 9.30, we're going to have our Christmas Eve service, joint service with Mount Nebo again. Amen. And we're just going to give God some praise. Amen. And we pray that Christmas Eve be the best Christmas Eve. Amen. Because I'm about to go somewhere. Y'all don't know where I'm going. Because on that day at 430, the Dolphins play the Cowboys right here in Miami. Amen. And I believe he's going to, I believe he's going to have favor on the 305. Amen. This concludes our stream. I pray something was said. Amen. To make you want to, amen, trust them when you can't trace or trail them or track them. Amen. Remember, get up. That's your fortitude. Amen. Get out. That's your attitude. Get back. That's your gratitude. Thank you. May God bless you and keep you.